The year is 2016, and Greg Hogg is, well, 16, 17, and I needed to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I liked math and programming, except did I? Because I have two older brothers that have basically finished their University of Waterloo co-op programming slash engineering education being very quite successful. So was I just totally drawn to that? Or was I totally drawn to math and programming by itself? Well, you can see that I did go down a similar path. But the reason was actually because mathematics makes video game artificial intelligence. That is the thing that I was truly fascinated in, whether I knew it or not. I watched so many YouTube videos that DeepMind, if you haven't heard of them, Google DeepMind was posting about making stick men walk by themselves and run around. And video games like Pokemon I absolutely love, where you know you need to figure out what is the best move to do. It is cool to write a bot that does that rule-based, but to actually figure out with data how to make the best decision absolutely fascinated me. And now am I a reinforcement learning specialist, which is driving all of those applications? I am not. I do know a fair amount of it, but I'm not. That is what drove me to the field of data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of those buzzword type things. And that is how I got to where I am today. I'm not going to fast track that. There is a huge amount of space in between that moment where I knew I really liked video games slash artificial intelligence to the end where I am here creating YouTube videos, trying to educate everyone I can in data science and machine learning. So here is my story of how I got to there. As I said, I do have two older brothers and they had done University of Waterloo education. I chose to go to University of Waterloo in mathematics because I knew I liked math. Now I was separating this idea from the whole video game thing because I didn't see these video game types as a, a actual career or education based thing. It turned into it later for sure. But for now, I just knew that I liked math. So, okay, if I like math, then I'm gonna do math and figure out how I can apply that to the world later. That is the beauty of doing math and I highly recommend that to anyone who hasn't already chosen a specialization or is considering switching. Do something like math or programming so that you're able to figure out your actual desire later. You can zoom into any particular topic a lot later. I chose mathematics where I started learning things like calculus, linear algebra. Um, you even at University of Waterloo, you're forced to learn statistics and probability, even just in a general math and computer science degree, you're actually forced to learn those things, which is a good idea. They really nailed the fact that you should be doing that. It's extremely relevant, but I'm learning these things and do I really care about them? Because like, you know, I'm trying pretty hard. I'm, you know, getting pretty good marks and getting decent co-op jobs. I got my first co-op job with not too much difficulty. Uh, I got the ones after that with, you know, not that much difficulty as well, even though it's a very competitive scene. And I knew that I was on a good path to success for sure. Like I could tell later in life, I'm going to be making a fair amount of money. I'm going to be making actually a fair amount of money during university, which is a very awesome privilege with the co-op degree at Waterloo. It is awesome. No, they're not sponsoring this video. I will highlight saying it's a great option as well. So I was doing that in mathematics and somewhere in first or second year, I was, you know, making Pokemon again, like from scratch. Like I'd find myself, instead of doing an assignment, I would just start coding all of Pokemon for some reason. And so clearly I really, really liked not just playing video games, I did play a lot of video games, but making video games. So I did some making video game type things. I've learned Unity and Unreal Engine, sort of, not too much of it, um, but I could make a video game in that. But that didn't do it for me either. I, I was like, mm, I mean, this is okay, but it's not, doesn't seem like a future to me. I really dove into that idea of back to DeepMind, they're posting a video of a stick man, and I've watched it a bunch of times, learning from nothing how to stand up, walk, and jump across a bunch of things to get to the finish. And all he knows is that it is a good idea to get to the end, and it's bad to be where you are currently. So that stuff absolutely blew my mind. I see videos of people solving Pokemon by they are, they are this person walking around, finding the right path, choosing the right move to use. It is so cool to me. So I start finding some buzzwords on the web, like 
you know, reinforcement learning. Well, reinforcement learning is a subset of machine learning. Okay, well, I should probably learn what machine learning is. Well, machine learning is a subset of data science itself. So I should probably learn SQL and all these type of things. It just started happening where at some point I hit the idea of a neural network. Not I stumbled upon the idea of a neural network myself. Sometimes I randomly hit this term called a neural network and I needed to figure out how it worked. So I would read a book on it. I'll link some stuff down below of many of the materials that I used to figure out this material and get to my path. One of the first things I learned was what a neural network was and how it worked. That involved the activation function sigmoid. So I would learn what that does and then do Andrew Ng's course on machine learning and deep learning. They're absolutely fantastic. They are in the links, links in the description down below. I did all of those that I could in second and third year, and I started applying those to my own projects, stuff like Pokemon. I, I hit um, something called genetic programming somewhere in second or third year, which is kind of similar to reinforcement learning in a sense. It's a machine learning topic and so many other things that just started popping up in random orders. School also had a huge intersection with this where, you know, I was learning SQL. I was learning linear algebra and calculus. And what I didn't even know at the time was people consider that as a complete stepping stone to machine learning and data science. And I do agree, like it pretty much is. I was learning linear algebra and calculus thinking that it was useless in school. And meanwhile, then reading a book and being like, wait, I can read this book. That's the point of school. Okay, seriously, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get very serious for a moment. If I was to take away anything from university, and I take away a lot from university, it has helped me in many different ways. But if I was to take away one thing, I can read a book. And I sound like a freaking idiot when I say that, because can't everyone read a book? No, actually, without reading, without knowing linear algebra or calculus or that type of thing, trying to understand theoretical material of pretty much any kind. You need to know these things. And I didn't know that, but I am so thankful that I had to learn those things. And I highly recommend that you learn them as well if you want to learn the actual groundwork of how this stuff works. If you just want to understand uh, to apply these things, you don't need to understand everything in here. Like maybe matrix multiplication could be useful, but you might, want, might not want to learn something like singular value decomposition for the principal component analysis. And as I, yes, I'm just listing off some terms, for example, but you might want to learn just the basic ideas so that you can read a freaking book and it doesn't hurt your head so much. Now, watch that, because if I was to read theoretical material today, and I still do, then of course, I actually get a headache very commonly. It can be very difficult to diagnose a research paper. I suspect it will always be for our entire life. But that is the takeaway. That is the huge, huge takeaway of university is that it lets you learn. And yes, most people think you go to university and that gives you the knowledge. Actually, not in math and computer science necessarily. That gives you the ability to learn whatever the heck that you want to learn. If it's machine learning and data science, go ahead and learn that. If it is just programming or engineering, I mean, it might help you a lot in engineering, but still my engineering brother lets me know that it gives him the ability to learn new material very easily, although it by itself did not give him that much actual improvement to say his career, for example. It just, it lets you learn material. So I'm going to go off that topic for now, but I know I'm ranting about that. It's super important. Please, if you can go to university and let them teach you the theoretical concepts that you might not think that you need to know. You might not, but it's extremely useful and a great use of your time. So anyways, back to the point, my story somewhere in third, fourth year by this point, I'd figured out the fact that I loved machine learning and data science, and I sort of kind of went away from the video game thing. I still do reinforcement learning every now and then. It's very interesting to me. But, you know, my main focus now turned into education, actually, at least on the side. Of course, on my career, I do something a little more, a little different and very deep learning based. But in terms of my own side idea, I like education. 
And the reason for that is because I feel rewarded for what I do. And so I have said this in other videos before, but it is worth saying again, whatever you like doing, make a freaking blog, make a YouTube video, make a website that shows all of your projects. And yes, put everything on GitHub, but do more than that. Get it into a format where people actually care, not just some project that an employer might care about because they're looking at your resume. Show to make something that real people care about. Even people that aren't in like technology fields, they make a product that they would enjoy. Do something that is noteworthy to the population. That is my biggest recommendation for anyone that is trying to learn any new content, any new content is get into education, get into product building. One of these types of ideas where you are making something that people find useful, whether it is for learning or whether it is for using, doesn't matter. In fourth year, I had figured out that, you know, learn most of the material that I need on a daily basis. Of course, I am always, always learning. And in some fields, I could do a lot more learning. But in general, I have figured out that I really like data science and machine learning, and I am now a YouTube channel creator. <laughs> that sounds like I create YouTube channels. I add content as much as I possibly can to my channel, not because I just feel the need to, that now that I've started it, I want to, because I learn so much every day. If, if, if you guys think that everything that I produce comes out just from my brain and thinking like, oh, I knew how to do this before. Um, I'm going to spin something up. Sometimes it does. Maybe half the time it does where I just think of something and I do it. But I need to learn and show you that I can, that anyone can do this. I need to reference blogs all the time. I need to read research papers and definitely like f coding frameworks and all of the functions and stuff. I don't know most of them by heart. I know some of the really important stuff. I know Python really, really well. And now is the time I should reference my Python masterclass, which I just released module one of. So please check that out if you are looking to learn coding. But the, the idea, I just really need everybody to be excited about what they do. That That is the big reason why I am getting more and more popular and not like I care about being popular, but like why people see me as a growing social figure in the data science and machine learning channel is because I like what I do and I like what I do. It's a circle. I like what I do because other people like what I do. And so I'm going to keep making content. I'm going to keep learning stuff and producing it for everyone else. So that is my journey where I, you know, did have some struggles in university, having, you know, not great marks, pretty good, but not like super, super amazing. Um, not everything went to plan. I had some downfalls too, but you need to figure out what you really liked and just learn all of the stuff about that. And then you will figure out what you really want to do. So that is my advice. At least another piece of advice is I learned from liking video games. That's all I knew is that and I still really, really like video games. I play them all the time. I knew I liked that. I learned all of the stuff around making video games about video games. And I just found my thing because it was very related to that topic. And from there, that doesn't mean you need to stick with that exact idea. Making artificial intelligence, that turns out to be a topic that is everywhere. Like you can do that in a, a grocery store, in an apartment building, like for, for selling real estate, um, for construction, even something like that. You can use data science, machine learning, and especially big data like PySpark, Spark. You can do that every single place. And so learn what you really like, and then learn everything about that. You will find what you want to do. And then once you've figured out the topic that you really like, make content on it, make so much content that everyone is impressed, not just your, your potential employer, but the general population. When the general population is impressed with your content and likes your content, that is when the employers will actually see it. And that is what is going to really change your life. Thank you for listening. This was my story. 
like and subscribe. I will see you next time.